as we keep an eye on the markets and the eclipse. Treasury yields hitting their highest levels of the year. Investors are awaiting key inflation data. You're not into the eclipse? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> You're not investing in the eclipse? You're investing no. in everything else. Everything else is fine. The eclipse, uh, I'm good with. All right. So we, we're talking a lot about rates um, and rate cuts, right? And the calculus has obviously changed. Uh, what are your own expectations in terms of rate cuts? Do you think we're going to get any this year? How many and when? Look, I think you're going to have it. You know, the question is, is it one or two? I think it's closer to one. Right now, the Fed's in no rush. The economy's doing well. Um, you're, you're seeing that, as far as the Fed is concerned, things are fine. Mm -hmm. And until they start seeing that there's a problem, their biggest worry is still inflation. So there's no rush on them cutting rates. How have you sort of dialed back your own expectations of, you know, let's say six months ago, what you thought was going to happen, right? The market has come a long way from pricing in seven yes. to three. <laughs> and now we have people like you and others saying one or, hey, maybe, maybe none. So how have you reset your own expectations over this period? I, I think for us, we don't really invest based on what's happening on rate cuts. Like where rates are is actually great just simply because we're lending money around 12 to 15 percent. Still, still, with this direct lending is still a, a... It's specialty lending. It's people who need money. And it's still a critical part of your investing strategy. Yeah, it's continued. It's actually going extremely strong in Europe because there's more issues. Less here in the United States, but Europe and Asia, um, people need capital. It feels like it's more... That space, I feel like, has exploded almost more than, than any other. It has. Uh, there's so many players. Uh, does that impact you at all? Is it more competitive? It is more competitive. It, that part has changed. But you got to remember, the biggest competitor were banks, right? So that's who we were competing, and their cost of capital was far, far lower than ours. So now if I'm competing against an Aries or an Apollo or anybody else, their cost of capital is roughly the same as mine, maybe a little bit lower. So you you're still able to compete and there's quite a bit to do for all of us. For me, we're just trying to do smaller deals mm -hmm. because you're not going to have as much competition. Are, are, there, are there any concerns about too much of, of that activity? In preparation for you coming on, I saw an IMF blog, okay? It said private credit warranted a, a close, closer watch. They called it opaque with limited oversight and, and vulnerabilities. Uh, what would your response to that be? Well, I think what ends up happening is regulators want to know everything. Right? And I don't blame them, because the more they know, the more there's a belief they can protect the economy. Here, they don't know who we're lending money to, whereas they could go into a bank, because a bank's regulator, and they know where the banks lend at what rate. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the fear is, or the concern, is that when there's a problem, there's going to be less that a regulator can do because they've got less control over the economy. Is that, is that a legitimate concern? Honestly, at the end of the day, I don't think so. We're not, we're going to lend based on the fact that we think we're going to get our money back plus our interest, right? We're not doing anything stupid, and I don't think any of the other firms are. I'm not thinking about you guys doing it. Of course, you're not doing anything stupid, but what if you're lending money to, you know, firms who... Ultimately, if they, they won't be able to pay the money back if the economy turns south or if interest rates right. go much higher. I hope so. Then we'll get control of those companies. See, that's why you always that's why you're always <laughs> one step ahead. <laughs> Lazary, you're always thinking about that. Do you think there's going to be more issues like that that are uh, advantageous yes. for you? I think there will be. I think as th there is a lot of capital out there. There are issues with the economy. People say that the economy is doing great, and I think it is. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the cost of that capital has gone up for companies. So because of that, you're going to have more issues. The Fed's only going to lower rates when they see we're going into recession. Right? So Really? Since, you think that? The, yeah, you, because, you don't think that they'll just be able to do it because inflation is going to come closer to target, and we know they're going to cut before, before it gets there anyway? Yeah, but if, if inflation is level, why would you lower rates? and the economy's doing strong, you're not going to lower rates unless there's an issue. Well, you could lower rates so that you're you know, gonna people, like Mark, people like Mark Lazary <laughs> don't get to take advantage of all of these distressed opportunities that might be caused if they left rates too high for too long. That's true, but the Fed is never early.
right? That is They're true. always late. That, and that's going to be the problem. So I think for us and others, you're going to have all these opportunities. What do you make of what Jamie Dimon had to say in his letter? It's been much talked about today, and in case you didn't see it, he said, markets seem to be pricing in a 70 to 80 percent chance of a soft landing. I believe the odds are a lot lower than that. What do you think? Look, I don't like betting against Jamie. <laughs> I, he sees a ton of data, right? He sees everything. He's got, he's lending money. I think Jamie's probably right, um, but... At the end of the day, I'd love to have the information that he has, you know, from the seat that he's at. We just, you know, we don't see things as much or as well as he can just simply because we're not lending to as many people. We don't have all the consumer information that he has from sort of all the credit card info. So Jamie's got a pretty good seat, and I think he's done a really good job over the last couple of years. He said interest rates could soar to 8 percent or more in coming years that they're prepared for a broad range of outcomes. Does that sound outlandish to you? I think that's hard. I, I think the only way rates really move up is if inflation really, all of a sudden the Fed hasn't been able to get that in control and you'd have to raise rates. But by doing that, you're talking about a real recession in this country. You know, the biggest problem people have is if you think about it, to buy a home, the cost of that has gone up. A lot. A yes, 100%. In the last years, that's why people don't feel the economy is doing that great. For you and I, the economy is great because it has a, the stock market's gone up. All the things we're doing have worked out. But if you're an average consumer, your cost of goods has gone up 25 percent and your cost of home housing has gone up 100 percent and your cost of fuel has gone up 25, 50 percent. Those are real things for the average American. That's why it's an issue, and that's why you've got this disconnect between people thinking the economy's doing well and people thinking, no, actually, it hasn't, it's not doing well, and it's worse for me.